everybody, today's video is about my recent interior design project. I study interior design at the University of Derby and I thought I would show you my recent project from start to finish so that you can see what interior design at university is like and if you're going to study interior design, what tasks you have to do. I'm in my first year right now and the brief of the project was to design a kitchen slash dining slash living space for a client but the focus was on the kitchen and the client wanted to build an extension but we still had to include some of her old furniture like the desk and she wanted a sofa. She had a very specific colour scheme, unusual cupboards that were sort of dark but white overhead cabinets and then some skylights. This was a lot of information right now. I think it will be easier to understand once I show you. I'm going to start first on what you sort of present your client first. So we had to do a concept board and a mood board. My mood board looks like this. The colours are very grey. I went with a grey colour scheme and blue and gold accents. So that's what this kind of represents. All the pictures that were on there had to be in 3D. And then I also made a, another mood board and I thought of going with like a wooden neutral beige theme with um, with white combined and uh, like a very cosy wooden feel. But the client actually preferred the grey tone so I went with the other mood board. Your mood board develops over time. On the mood board you stick pictures down that I printed out and I just stuck them down with some tape. Underneath here is just normal cardboard and I used Amazon parcels and stuck them together with Yoohoo glue and then I just wrapped them in normal A4 paper and I just taped it all down and I kind of uh, wrapped it in almost like a Christmas present or something. That's how I did this. Then moving on to my concept board. That was actually one of the only things that critiqued a little bit on my project and it's because I didn't actually play with heights a lot. They were really particular of overlaying stuff. All the stuff on my concept board is really spread out and it's not really overlapping each other. I think the only couple of things on my concept board that I will touch on is the wallpaper. I thought of doing a false concrete wall and then I also really liked the golden accent wallpaper on one of the pictures and I wanted to put in skylight and then I wanted a really light herringbone flooring. There's really quite a lot to go through so I'll try not to talk about the things in too much depth. If you want to see another video about this then let me know and just let me know if you want to know about anything more specific and I'll be happy to do more videos about this project. So then the next thing I handed in to show the client is my sample board and I included some herringbone flooring on there, my colour scheme for the kitchen, also what handles I wanted to include, the blue fabric that's on there is for the sofa and then in the background I've got the grey and also the golden wallpaper. We have to specify where you can get each thing and what colour it's in so I did a little legend on the side. They really liked the sample board because it was really layered and it showed everything. So I got quite a good critique on the sample board. So this is a rendered floor plan done in pen. So we had to take measurements at the client's place. Then I drew all of the floor plan out. So for example, if this was two meters, I drew like a two meter line here and one is to 50 and you use a scale ruler to do that. And then you just render it all with those pens when you were done. And I had a few different layouts and I asked the clients which layout she preferred. We had to window mount all of these. So you cut out the cardboard and then put the drawings, like kind of stick them on at the back. I'm gonna show you what the back looks like. It actually doesn't look very neat because I did this very last minute. I actually didn't do the best job at window mounting it, but it still looks nice from the front. So I guess that's what counts. So. This here is a reflective ceiling plan, so that means it's all the lights. So the yellow are artificial light and the blue things are skylights, so natural light that comes in. This is just what you can see on the ceiling. We also need to do legends on the side, and this was at a scale of 1 to 50 as well. Then moving on to the next sheet that I presented. This, in my opinion, was actually my favourite sheet. Everyone really liked my perspective. I got 
the most compliments on my perspective and I actually really do like it as well. I know the stuff for those of you who haven't done interior design is very daunting but it's actually not that difficult. Once they show you how to do it, you will be perfectly fine doing it. This actually didn't take me too long. The longest thing in my opinion is just drawing out all the lines. So again, I went to the client and measured the entire thing. The ceiling height was 2.3 meters. So this thing is 2.3 meters. And then this is the flooring here and the walls here. A section is where you cut through a building. We had to do two sections and it indicated on my floor plan that I showed you where those sections are. So here you're looking onto the kitchen and this is done on a scale to 1 to 25 so that is a little bit bigger. It looks very grey but that's just because my colours was white and grey. And then I've done the perspective here. The perspective is in 1 to 20. It's a one point perspective. We were meant to do it freehand but I wanted to do it a bit like nice and neat so that's why I just did it like this and again I rendered it in pen. Now I'm going to show you the more boring part. We had to do a kitchen island design and I did a axonometric view. This is just of the kitchen island. We had to focus on it and present it on sheets as well and window mounted as well. And then I just had to do all these different views. This one is the top view and again I drew this all in pen. These are two more views. This is the front view and this one is the back view and I put all the measurements on the side. This is in a scale of 1 to 10 so that you can see it a little bit better. So generally the lower number is the bigger it is. So 1 is to 50, the drawing is going to be a lot smaller than 1 is to 10. This is the side view and then I also did a section. So these were all my presenting sheets. Now I'm going to move on with the folio that I also had to hand in because into those presenting sheets went a lot of pre-work. I handed in this folio and I also handed in this little folder. In here are just sketches. So I usually um, draw things out on tracing paper first and then I photocopy it onto normal paper because with pen it's just a lot easier to erase it. So we had to do research before we started this project and I've started my folder just with a title. This might be a little bit boring so I'll try and go through this as quickly as I can. We had to choose two kitchens and just draw a rough plan not to scale and that's what I did and also kind of describe it a little bit as well and then we also had to draw a section of the kitchen. We also had to write a little bit about it and then we had to include some pictures of the space there's quite a few and then this is the next kitchen I looked at and the plan is on this side, this is the section. These are not to scale and then there's some pictures of the space. I had to write a little bit about it. We also had to go into showrooms and take some pictures of current trends so that's this. Again quite a couple of sheets. Moving on to the actual project. This is part two, so the actual design. Before that was all just research. So we had to draw out the existing floor plan. So this is actually what the kitchen looked like and they wanted to get rid of this wall and build the extension here. So we then had to draw the actual floor plan that we were going to work with, so of what it's going to look like in the future. And now moving on to some of the draft floor plans I've done. So I've done a couple of layouts so that the client could decide on one layout. So this is one layout, this is one layout, this is the layout I decided on because it just has a lot of space to walk around and it just made a lot of sense. The kitchen is quite big. And then there are two more plans. Here I've got the kitchen island right there and then there's another plan here. I've done one more plan, I see what I mean. All these things are a little bit boring but we still had to do them so a lot of work went into that that you don't see when you're presenting it. It was actually so so much work. Just so you know if you're studying interior design it is very very time consuming and I also included a lighting plan which is kind of like the reflective ceiling plan that I've showed you but you see the furniture in there. Once I chose a floor plan I drew it in a lot more detail and this is what it looks like obviously also on my presentation sheet and I've literally just coloured this in. All of what I'm showing you is something that I drew myself. All of these drawings, like a single drawing, takes a couple of hours to do 
so you can imagine how much like work went into this folio this for example maybe took me three hours to do some drawings take a little bit longer some take shorter but i would say um at least two hours for a single drawing then i had to include some existing sections and I drew them all out myself as well. This is what my perspective looks like without the colouring, so without the rendering. Rendering makes a big big difference in presenting it. These are what the sections look like just done in pen. Then in here I probably won't show you everything because it's kind of repetitive but I can show you the principle that I work in. I draw it all out in pencil first and then go over it and pen onto tracing paper and then I print it onto normal paper so I just scan it in. So all the stuff in here is just kind of that. I also forgot to mention that I also handed in an a full folio and I put the brief in here and then we had to do a couple of exercises. This is just the kitchen triangle, so the distance between stove sink and fridge. The most important thing in here is that we had to do a specification sheet on which exact appliances we are going to put in. So I included all the things, the tab, the chairs, these chairs are actually from Ikea, handles, all this kind of stuff and I also included the measurements and the manufacturer code. Then I've also done research in the measurements for things so for example for the sofa and I've included it all in here this is not mandatory but you kind of as you go on you have to research all the measurements yourself anyway so it's good to have a sheet like this then I had some inspiration pictures to show to the client and then another important thing was this sketch I did really nothing special it was actually really quite horrible we worked with a slate and it didn't respond very well but they wanted for us to experiment with it I did a pencil drawing and then I tried rendering it at first as well so this is just a rough sketch and it didn't turn out really well I had to include this anyway just to show that I experimented with things they really want you to show everything you did so that they can see the process and the amount of work that went into your work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and do let me know in the comments if you want to see me do this with my next project as well. I really hope this gave you an insight on what it is like to study interior design. See you very soon. Goodbye!